Hey again everyone. I wanted to take a look at Dream Booth for fine tuning stable diffusion, but I'm trying to rely less on Google Colab for machine learning projects. I guess I used a lot of computing credits training voice models, so I get disconnected pretty often now. And locally was an absolute nightmare to put it mildly. So maybe this video can help everyone that ran into some similar trouble. I'll go over the major steps of the install process, a little about tweaking the training parameters with the launch script, and show some of the results and how to use a model with stable diffusion, specifically the Auto 1111 web UI. A lot of the installed steps take a long time to complete, so I'm going to time lapse over them. Down below in the comments, you'll find a link to a list of the commands to copy and paste. Well, probably most of them anyway. I think I had tried to follow every tutorial out there, but I couldn't quite get anything running well or really at all. But much of this is going to mirror a tutorial from Reddit, which I've linked below. Most of the problems you're going to run into are probably going to be related to using the wrong version of dependencies, Torch not being compiled with the correct CUDA version, or using the incorrect version of the CUDA libraries. So before we get started, get your system ready by enabling WSL2 and downloading and installing Ubuntu. There are a lot of tutorials available online for this if you want to look one up. Once Ubuntu is downloaded, click the icon in the start menu to launch it. The first launch may take a few minutes. Create a new user and select a password when prompted. You may need to update your WSL kernel to enable the vGPU. Now on my system, for some reason, a Windows update would only install version 4 kernels. You can download a kernel update manually from the Microsoft catalog, which is linked below. Use the most recent version 5 kernel available. You may need to do this to enable the vGPU. After installation and startup, you'll end up at a user level command prompt, which looks like a dollar sign, and shows the path as a tilde. This is the short form saying it's your home directory. The absolute path of this is slash home slash your username. Head over to the Anaconda site and find the download URL for a package compatible with your Linux distribution and download it using wget. Again, these commands are listed below in the description. Make the script or package executable using the chmod plus x command and run it by typing its full name. Advance the license agreement using the spacebar and type yes to accept. You can choose to have Conda launch automatically if you want, it's up to you. The next steps will vary depending on your hardware. My system is running CUDA 11.7 drivers, so I'll need the CUDA 11.7 package. The NVIDIA developer portal will have the installation instructions for your CUDA version, so copy those. You may run into a problem with the step copying the keyring.gpg. If you do, you'll have to copy the keyring file to slash user slash share slash keyrings slash cuda dash archive dash keyring dot gpg, but I've also noted this down below. Update apt and then install cuda, which may take quite a while. Open a Windows shell and type wsl dash dash shutdown once CUDA is installed, and then start your Linux distribution again just to make sure CUDA is installed correctly. Update conda with conda update dash n base dash c defaults conda. This will update the base environment with the latest packages. Then create a conda environment to contain Dream Booth. Specify python equals 3.9 after the name to use python version 3.9. Activate the conda environment with conda activate and the name of your new conda environment. Clone the Shivam Shirao diffusers repo with the Dream Booth training scripts. Next, install Torch, Torch Vision, and Torch Audio using pip. These need to be compiled for your CUDA version used on your system. Using a different version may work, but will result in terrible memory management or glacially slow performance like between 10 and 100 times longer to run. Install the dependencies for the cloned repo. Install Triton with the dash u flag to upgrade it if a previous version was installed. As far as I know, Triton is the reason why this doesn't really run on Windows on its own. Next, install xformers using pip and git. I think the linked branch was removed for some reason, but installing from the main branch link down below should work. 
and this will take quite a while. After Xformers is installed, run the configuration for Accelerate by typing Accelerate Config. Select 0, 0 for the first two options. If you want to try using DeepSpeed, you're sort of on your own for this. DeepSpeed requires too much RAM for me, so I really can't use it. So type no to continue following along here. Next, you'll need to choose to use FP16 or not. This needs to match whatever you're using in your training script or command line later. Some cards may use less memory with FP16 and train faster, some may not. You can run Accelerate Config at the command line again at any time to change to a different configuration option. After Accelerate is configured, type Hugging Face CLI to log into the Hugging Face Model Hub. Go to the URL displayed in the CLI to get an access token, and then paste this access token into the window using a right mouse click. This will allow the script to download the model and all the associated files right from the Model Hub. You can use a shell script to save the command line parameters for the script to make running it much easier, and the author has already included an example for you to work from. Leave the model name and the VAE to use the latest version 1.5 model, and adjust the output underscore DIR to where you'd like your output model to be stored. If using mixed precision, use the mixed precision equals FP16 flag. If not, remove it and make sure Accelerate is configured to match. The use 8-bit atom flag may slow down training but decrease memory requirements. You may be able to increase trained batch size to 2, but I ran into a few out of memory errors sometimes. Sample batch size determines how many images are generated for each checkpoint during saving. I'm not sure if this is done, is done as a single batch, so I haven't increased it past 4, just in case I've run into out of memory issues. Max train steps determines how many overall steps will be done, and a checkpoint will be saved at a number of steps specified by the save interval. Each model and associated files is about 4.5 gigabytes, so don't go too crazy here or you'll run out of hard disk space. The save sample prompt is the prompt used to generate the sample images. You'll probably want to use the same prompt as used in your concept list JSON file, so you'll be able to compare similar outputs. Open the conceptlist.json file and customize it according to your needs. Theoretically, you can train multiple sets of data, but I haven't tried that out yet, so we'll just stick to one data set here. The class is a general group of things that represents your image set, such as a person, a dog, or a car. The class data directory is the directory where the images representing the data class will be stored. This path doesn't need to exist, it'll be created by the script, but customize this according to your needs. The instance data deer is the path to your set of training images. The instance prompt is a general form of the prompt that will be used to trigger training data in the model. For example, a photo of Elvira, person. You can often get your trained data without using the class, but using both in the text image prompt will summon up the data closer to your training data set. After customizing the shell script and concepts list.json, make the script executable with chmod plus x and launch it by typing the full file name. If it's the first time the script is run, the script will download the model and associated files, and this will take quite a while depending on your connection, because I think it's about 10 gigabytes of data. I let this run for 2,000 steps, with a checkpoint saved every 250 steps just so I can show the, how the sample images change as the model is trained. The early steps here seem to be nothing but terrifying chicken hands and boobs. Not very impressive, but things improve considerably toward the end. This definitely could have used some more training though and probably a higher or adaptive learning rate. I did another training run with the same parameters up to 8,000 steps, and I'll show some output generated with stable diffusion later on. This is a diffusion model, not a transformer model used by stable diffusion. 
but the author of the training suite put together a set of conversion scripts. You can find the convert diffusers to stable diffusion script in the scripts subdirectory of the cloned GitHub repository. Run it using Python, the script name, with the model path flag pointing to the output directory of the checkpoint you would like your, to convert, and the checkpoint path being the path to the output stable diffusion compatible checkpoint. Copy this model to your stable diffusion models directory and refresh the models. You may need to use the disable safe unpickle flag in the web UI to load your dream booth train models. If, if you're using your own train dream booth models, remove any potentially unsafe models from your model directory before launching the web UI with this flag. So here are some generic output generated with the Elvira model trained up to 2000 steps. They can be triggered using the token Elvira and the class reference person. It certainly picked up the wild hair and makeup, but the human features are pretty poor. But this is really just a half-picked model. The features can be improved by increasing the sampling rate up to a point. The Stable Diffusion 1.5 model does a better job at recreating faces, especially those with makeup, than version 1.4 does. You probably won't need to rely on code former or other face restoration models anymore. If you've used those a lot, you've probably noticed that the processed images have a characteristic look to them. Now you'll probably be able to get a wider spectrum of secondary facial characteristics like lipstick, realistic looking teeth, or realistic looking makeup. Hands are still pretty bad, but can be improved by fine tuning with an image set with hands. Well, that's a bit of juxtaposition. Let's try putting her in a more characteristic environment. Looks more like the ring girl, but the outfit is there. Yeah, that's a bit more like it. Ooh, that one's a miss. Well, I guess it's a little difficult to look spooky in the middle of the afternoon, no matter how hard you're gothing it. This one gives me flashbacks of Kai's power tools for Photoshop, so that's pretty spooky. The fine-tuned models can sometimes lose their ability to generate other things. Let's try a couple silly prompts to see how it copes. Since it's only been fine-tuned a little, it's still pretty good at applying styles to the topic and arguably does a better job at recreating artistic rather than photorealistic images. Just by applying the generic term anime to the prompt can generate a huge spectrum of images, but it looks like it will still generate any generic style, charcoal, colored pencil, even crayon. The hands were prominent in a few of the training images I used, so they come out looking pretty well with these prompts. If you've browsed stable diffusion topics online, you've probably seen elaborate prompts with brackets, colons, decimals, and digits. While that can sometimes be necessary for fine-tuning ideas or summoning up some obscure idea in the data, using a Dream Booth trained model can largely replace the need for prompt voodoo. This model was trained on 512 by 512 pixel images and did a decent job at generating images at that size. When the resolution is increased, it performs even better though, but the high resolution fix is required and the denoise slider has a large effect on the output. Position of the tag and class triggers in the prompt can greatly affect the output as well. Applying your trigger to the subject can be more intense than using the trigger as a separate term or applying it at the end of the prompt. Dream booth models can also be merged using the checkpoint merge function in the stable diffusion web UI. This is going to be a trial and error process if you attempt it though, because all models and mixes are going to perform differently. For a model trained to only 2000 steps and using a data set of about 24 images, I'm pretty impressed with the performance here. Thank you to everyone that has put together tutorials and to the author of the scripts. If you have the hardware and can spend a couple hours setting up the environment, Dreambooth is definitely worth trying out. It isn't quite point and click, but there are really only like 12 lines of scripts you'll need to alter in the whole process to get it up and running once your system is set up. Thanks for watching.